Astronomers in Hawaii, patrolling for killer asteroids and other flashes in the night with the Pan-STARRS-1 telescope on Maui, first spotted this mystery object speeding away from the sun at 50 miles per second on October 19, 2017. They called it Umuamua, Hawaiian for scout or messenger, but what was the message? In today's video, we are going to discuss this strange object Oumuamua, so stick to the very end of this video because we are also going to discuss where this object came from. There are so many questions like what exactly is Oumuamua and why this object is named Oumuamua, so sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. The object is an emissary, a representative of some distant and unknowable star system. It had been wandering the cold, empty interstellar depths of the Milky Way for hundreds of millions or perhaps billions of years before encountering the Sun. Oumuamua isn't large. Its biggest side is between 10 and 100 meters, 33 to 330 feet wide. It could fit comfortably inside a football field. Reflected sunlight from Oumuamua continually dimmed and brightened, telling astronomers that the object was tumbling end over end every few hours. Based on that variation in the light, Astronomers determined that Oumuamua is much longer than it is wide, by a factor of 5 to 10, meaning it's shaped like either a cigar or a pancake. By the time Oumuamua was detected, it was already on its way out of the solar system. Given the object's incredible speed and steep angle relative to the rest of the system, Oumuamua was not gravitationally bound to the Sun. Astronomers monitored Oumuamua with a variety of ground and space-based observatories for about 11 days. That's it. 11 days. Those observations are all the information we'll ever have about this mysterious visitor. Oumuamua is already too distant and too dim to be seen with even our most powerful instruments, and no rocket could ever hope to catch up with it. Oumuamua is perhaps the strangest object we have ever seen inside the solar system. No other known asteroid or comet has a shape that extreme, although to be fair, our catalog of objects 100 meters or larger isn't exactly complete. Oumuamua has a dusty red color, which is similar to the hues of other deep solar system objects. But it didn't act like a comet, the most common small object at those distances from the Sun. The interstellar visitor entered the solar system with a velocity very close to the local standard of rest, which is the average velocity of stars in our neighborhood. However, most of those stars have individual velocities much higher than that. So why should Oumuamua have something very close to the average number? It remains a mystery. Lastly, on its way out of the solar system, Oumuamua gave astronomers one more giant mystery. It appeared to be accelerating, moving away from the Sun at a slightly faster pace with every passing day. This wouldn't be the weirdest thing for comets, which can have abnormal acceleration profiles due to outgassing of materials, but observations of Oumuamua revealed no such activity. Theories and models abounded in the literature. Avi Loeb, an astronomer at Harvard, wrote on to the bestseller list earlier this year with a book, Extraterrestrial, the first sign of intelligent life beyond Earth, arguing that Oumuamua was an alien space vessel of some kind and scolding the astronomical community for not thinking more outside the box about extraterrestrial life. The object's imputed shape, he said, could be perfectly consistent with that of a light sail of the type that Dr. Loeb and his colleagues, in an ambitious project called Breakthrough Starshot, hoped to send to Alpha Centauri sometime this century. But an international team of comet experts, writing in Nature Astronomy in 2019, under the name of the Oumuamua Issy Team, concluded that all the data were consistent with a purely natural origin for Oumuamua. Last year, Dr. Lachlan of Yale and his student Daryl Seligman, now at the University of Chicago, suggested that Oumuamua was a primordial iceberg of hydrogen that had formed in the dark, cold center of a molecular cloud, one of the vast assemblages of primordial gas that give rise to stars. The problem was that it was hard to explain how the hydrogen, which freezes at a temperature around 3 degrees Kelvin, barely above absolute zero, would stay frozen on the long trip from its birth to here. Inspired by the hydrogen ice idea, Dr. Jackson and Dr. Desch investigated other kinds of icebergs that might fill the bill. They finally hit on nitrogen. We've never seen any examples of hydrogen ice in nature, Dr. Desch said in an email. But when the New Horizons spacecraft went past the previously unexplored Pluto in 2015, it found a world awash in nitrogen glaciers. Oumuamua was small, but half as long as a city block and only as thick as a three-story building, but it was very shiny, they wrote in one of their papers. The shininess is about the same as the surfaces of Pluto and Triton, which are also covered in nitrogen ice. Triton is the moon of Neptune. 
In the scenario favored by Dr. Desh and Dr. Jackson, the nascent Oumuamua was knocked from a Pluto-like object that was circling a distant star some half billion years ago. It would have originally been roundish, but as it traveled through space, it was carved away by cosmic rays. By the time it entered our solar system in 1995 or so, it had lost half its original mass, according to their model. During its passage around the sun, it likely melted into a sliver like a bar of soap in the shower, the researchers say. Only 10% would have remained by the time it left the solar system, boosted by the rocket-like effect of evaporating nitrogen. Nitrogen sublimates at about 25 degrees Kelvin, Dr. Desh said. We calculate that Oumuamua reached temperatures in the 45 to 50 K range while it rounded the sun, so it was sublimating nitrogen gas like crazy, hence the strong mass loss. He and Dr. Jackson concluded in their paper, a key advantage of the proposal we advance here of a nitrogen ice fragment is that it can simultaneously explain all of the important observational characteristics of Oumuamua, and that material of this composition is found in the solar system. We therefore conclude that Oumuamua is an example of an uncommon but certainly not exotic object, a fragment of a differentiated Pluto-like planet from another stellar system. Of course, that's not the end of the story. In an email, Dr. Loeb complained, among other things, that if Oumuamua was made of nitrogen, it should also contain carbon, which was not detected by the Spitzer Space Telescope. Because both nitrogen and carbon are produced together by a thermonuclear carbon-nitrogen-oxygen cycle in stars, Dr. Desh responded in an email, spoken like a cosmologist. He went on to note that planets have ways of sifting and separating the elements they were born with. Otherwise, Earth's atmosphere, which is 79% nitrogen, should be several percent carbon instead of one-tenth of one percent carbon. Or, as another astronomer pointed out, the Great Lakes would be all full of sparkling water. Dr. Desh noted, moreover, that the reddish color of Oumuamua is an exact match to the redness of the ice on Pluto, which is 0.1% carbon in the form of methane. If so, Oumuamua was just the tip of an unsuspected iceberg, so to speak, which is exactly what Dr. Desh and Dr. Jackson contend. A lot of things get ejected from planetary systems, Dr. Desh pointed out. Older papers assumed that these would be as big as comets, and so predicted them in much lower numbers. But if they are smaller, Dr. Desh added, there would be many more fragments flying out, so something like Oumuamua would not necessarily be an anomaly. So far we've seen one N2 ice fragment and one comet among the interstellar objects, he wrote in an email. Small number statistics don't get much smaller than that. Those numbers were about what is expected according to their calculations, he said. Maybe we got a little lucky to see one so quickly, but it's not a fluke or anything. This is a common object to be entering our solar system. If more are out there to be seen, they should soon be detectable by the Vera Rubin Observatory, a giant telescope in Chile that will start stalking the sky later this decade. Let me tell you something, you made this far, and I hope you found this video interesting and informative as well. If you did, then hit that like and subscribe button, and if you really love this kind of stuff, then check out my other videos.